Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity Open P1AM Industrial Arduino Time Instructions. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So up on my Productivity Blocks, you can see we have our time instruction, which, which consists of four different uh, blocks of instructions. So we have the delay in milliseconds, we have a delay in microseconds, and with both these instructions what it will do is actually pauses the program for the amount of time specified as a parameter. In our case here, 1000 milliseconds automatically comes up which is equal to one second, or we can delay microseconds. 1000 microseconds is equal to one millisecond. So it depends on what we actually want. And these variables here in the delay is actually a long um, unsigned variable. Then we have our runtime milliseconds and we have our runtime microseconds. So runtime milliseconds actually will give us the time since the CPU unit has powered up and that's expressed in milliseconds. So in other words, it will give us the exact time of our value since the CPU has powered up. And that integer is going to be an unsigned long variable, which will give us a large number. So on the runtime milliseconds and the runtime microseconds. So what we're going to do is take a look at some of the differences between these two instructions and and why we would want to use one over the other. So let's take a look now at our physical hardware that we have here. And on our hardware, what we have is our P1AM-100 CPU open. And we are, this is our CPU switch itself. We have our USB connection that we're using to program. Then we have our P1AM GPIO, which is we're using our inputs and outputs here. We have one switch and we have two LED lights that we're actually using in our program. If we take a look now at the um, at the hardware or the way it's wired, here is our wiring diagram. So what you'll see is on my GPIO, my positive is going to my positive rail of my breadboard. My ground is going to my negative on my, my DIN rail and then my switch I come out D2 into a 10k ohm resistor and into one side of the switch then the other side of the switch is going to ground then we have a plus side going through a 10k ohm resistor to that same first side that we have here so if no one's touching the switch we're feeding our our plus voltage directly into the input so it's actually on or high. Then if we close the switch here you can see then we, we bring it down to the ground so it becomes low then. So it's a good indication of where you, your switch is in either high state or low state or on or off. Then we have two LED lights. We have the um, D1 which is going to be operating independent of D0. So D1, when we hit this switch, we want D1 to actually um, turn off or on, depending on the status of that light. Then we want D0 here to be oscillating on off every one second. You can see that's what our program is currently doing right now. So let's take a look at the actual program that we have on this unit. And here it is right here. So the first thing we do is we're going to start this up. We're going to set our serial monitor to our specifications here. 115,200 and 891. Then we're going to set a variable, integer variable, called previous millisecond to zero. And that is part of our setup. And what we do is we do our loop. So we have the first if else then. And on the first if else, what you'll see is that we have our CPU switch. And if it is on, 
then what we do is we delay 100 milliseconds, so one second. So that delay actually pauses our program. Then we set D0 as high. Then we delay again for one second for 100 millisecond or 1000 milliseconds. And then we set D0 low. Now, if the CPU is off, then what we're using is the runtime milliseconds and we're doing a condition. So if the runtime milliseconds minus the previous milliseconds is greater than or equal to 1000 or one second, then what we want to do is we want to set our variable, our previous milliseconds to the runtime milliseconds. And then we check, we use it if else condition. So if we get our input point of D0, if it is low, then we set high. If it's high, then we set low. So we're just oscillating that input back and forth. So that is our operation for our switch itself. So we can see how we're going to use the runtime and then we're going to see how we use the delay. Now remember, delay actually pauses our program. So that means that anything below this instruction as it's doing delay will not function. So then we have an if else. So we get input D2, which is our switch. If it is on, then it sets the output on or high D, D1 or LED D1. And then if it's low, then we set D1 low. Then through our monitor port, we're going to specify, we're going to print our milliseconds. We're going to spit our minus sign. We're going to print our runtime. And then we're going to print our string equal. And then we're going to do the calculation for a runtime minus our previous milliseconds. And that way it will actually show us our equation for our time function. And we can actually see that operating. So that is our program. So now let's um, call up. Actually, what we'll do is we'll verify it first and it verifies that program for us. So the productivity blocks, the beauty of it is that will automatically compile into C++ code for us. And so we don't have to really worry about syntax or anything else. Then we, we can upload that into our actual unit itself, make sure that we have the program that we are looking at actually match the one into our actual hardware. And now that our, our we're done uploading, we can now run our program. So let's go call up our serial monitor. And here we go. So you can see the serial monitor. We're taking again our previous minus the next one, and it gives us our output. So our delay. And you can see our delay is in uh, one second increments. So here you can see this is our light every one second we're actually pausing and we're oscillating that output now our switch you can see that our monitor is constantly updating so that means our switch will operate the way it should as i hit it it will actually turn it on and off as it should okay now let's do and turn on our switch for our cpu once we do that again you see really nothing's changed here we have our oscillating light here it's still oscillating on and off every one one second up on my screen though what you'll notice is that it's actually waiting every two seconds in order to switch the input so because of that delay of our program if i were to hit the switch nothing happens and if I catch it right, then it will. So you can see how our program, if I hold it, now it will work. I have to now hold it longer than our delay in order for it to actually function. So if we do this in a real world application, what you have to notice is that anytime you use the delay, you're actually pausing your program. That may not be a good thing when you're trying to look for things like an input switch that turns on and off. 
So things to keep in mind as you're programming. Now, if we turn that switch off again, you can see our program runs really quickly. And again, we can now pick up that switch. So be very careful of our delay functions within our Arduino software. Now, the other thing is, is that you'll notice that we have, if I turn that switch back on again, what you'll notice is that we have uh, variables here that are long and they're unsigned for our milliseconds. And because of that, you'll also, you'll see that we're always have a positive number here. And because we always have a positive number, you'll notice that even when our variables reset or go back to zero, we're still going to have that positive number, which means that we don't have to change our program. So as long as we have a formula like this, we can operate no problem. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the, scroll in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.